Hi, my name is Matthias and I'm a composer, producer and one of Propellerhead's product specialists. Since it's music making month, I thought I would show you some tips on how you can get a song going using loops in Record and Reason. A lot of people have an opinion about loop usage. Maybe they think it's lazy or that it's not very original, but fact is that a lot of genres like hip hop and electronica and some really big acts like Daft Punk have completely based their sound on using loops and samples. So what I'm gonna show you is a good thing you can do with drum loops. So for this I'm gonna import a bunch of drum loops. Let me first set the tempo to 170 BPM, as I know that's around the tempo the audio file should be in. So here I have a bunch of drum and bass breaks. I think I got them from a magazine or something. So let's let's listen to a few and just see how they sound. Pretty standard drum and bass break. So I'm gonna import like five of these to the track. And as you can see, they all come on different audio tracks. These first three clips were 170 BPM, and as you can see, they line up perfectly in this two bar loop. But these two were 175, and as you can see, they're a bit out of tempo here, out of sync. But what you can do in record is select these clips and this little arrow here at the side. If you hold over it and push the Option key on Mac and Alt on Windows, you get a little clock cursor. By clicking and dragging, you can time stretch these clips. And now they should be 170 BPM like the rest. So, what I want to do with these clips is cut them into quarter note pieces and then kind of play audio Legos for a bit. So, I'm gonna use the eraser tool and cut up here. As you can see, when I click here instead of in the clip, it does actually cut up every audio clip so I don't have to do it on every single one. What I'm gonna do now is just remove a few of these and see if I can make a new cool beat with the new content. You can basically do this in whatever way you want but I find it's smart to look at the transients at the audio files so you see you get something that actually has a hit because it gets uh, much easier to work with. And if we listen back, this is what we have now. So I'm gonna move this to the first audio track just to keep things clean. And take the other ones and delete them. And what I can do now when I have these little audio clips as a loop is I can use some interesting techniques like reversing. So if I right click a clip here, I can select reverse clips. And as you can hear, it reverses the clip. What I can also do that's really fun is if I remove this one, I can do the time stretching tip I showed you before and make one double time instead. That's pretty cool, right? So you get a very unique sound. Let's reverse this one too and see what happens. And when you're happy with your loop, you can just join them all together by selecting them, going to the edit menu and pushing join clips. Now you have a brand new loop. And what you can do, because this is audio in record, is change the tempo and everything will time stretch. Let's do something really drastic and take this to 110 BPM and listen how it sounds. Not very cool, but it's a useful thing to, to get it to go really, really slow or really, really fast. And now that I'm at 110 BPM, I'm actually going to import another loop, but a guitar loop. So let's click import audio file go down here and here I have an acoustic guitar loop that's perfect 
and now it was placed on the same audio track but that doesn't matter we can easily just create a new audio track and dragging the clip over I'm gonna make this a four bar loop copy this and let's just listen back real quick that was a bit loud and annoying don't you think so first I'm gonna take up the tempo again to let's say around 150 BPM should be cool and now it time stretches both the clips so it should sound pretty neat because it's kind of a in the middle between 110 and 170 <laughs> but I don't want to be that simple so I'm gonna cut it up in quarter notes again but since this is one loop and I don't want to bring any other loops in instead I'm just gonna make it more like a beat more like a stutter and remove some of these slices and see how it sounds so let's listen what I did <laughs> that's pretty cool and you can use the same techniques that you used for the drum slices so we can reverse this one we can time stretch this one Heck, let's reverse that one too and see how it sounds. Pretty cool beat, right? And now we can go back to doing the stuff we usually do. So let's create some instruments and I want a bass in this track. As you can see, I went into the recent factory sound bank here and I'm gonna select the haunted bass preset. Very simple. I'm just gonna record something on my MIDI keyboard here. It's a pretty cool baseline, very simple. Let's add some more stuff. Let's see, let's go and get a refill. Propeller heads, electromechanical refill is one of my favorites. Gonna go take a Rhodes electric piano here. And just record a little line. course you can always access this audio and add some effects so in the track let's go to to this track here that has the guitar let's just add a distortion and see what happens and what you can do with it <laughs> add some reverb on it too I, I think that's a good idea that's pretty nice let's listen back to what we have bad for starting out with a few loops right so the key to using loops I think is being creative with them start cutting them up and treating them and changing the tempo this is really easy in recording reason as you can use reasons great effects and you can use records brilliant time stretching so you can really get a lot of different sound from preset loops that you have laying around so thanks a lot for watching this and be sure to check out all the other music making month content as well there's a lot of really creative stuff going on there that will most likely inspire you and who knows maybe i'll be back